But there are many sentiments that people carry in life that are simply not biblical. Uh, one would be, well, God is angry at me and he wants to ruin my life. Some people think this. God's just out to ruin everything that I planned for myself. You know, that is so wrong. <laughs> God's mad at me. God is not mad at you. God is mad about you. If there's one thing that's clear in scripture, it is this, God loves you. <laughs> you see it from Genesis to Revelation. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. The Bible even says, God is love. First John 3, 1 says, Behold what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called God's children. God loves you. God wants to bless you. God wants to give you a life that is worth living. Now let's take the flip side of that and we hear people say, God loves me and accepts me as I am, right? This is usually said by someone that is probably doing something they should not do. Yeah, I know that I go out and I party and get drunk on the weekend, but God loves me and accepts me as I am. Well, I know that we're getting a divorce and we don't have a biblical reason, but still, God loves me and accepts me as I am. I know that I shouldn't do this, but God loves me and accepts me as I am. Other variations of this is, no one is perfect. And one of my favorites, hey man, don't judge my journey. Yeah, I might judge your journey a little bit. Especially because your journey might lead you to the wrong place. The fact of the matter is, the Bible tells us that judgment begins in the house of God. A Christian is to be discerning, and a Christian is to make judgments. When Jesus says, oh by the way, their favorite verses are, judge not lest you be judged, and let him that is without sin cast the first stone, right? That's our way of saying, go away and stop talking to me, Christian, with your Bible. Now it is true, Jesus said, judge not lest you be judged, but a better translation would be, condemn not lest you be condemned. But this idea of God loves me and accepts me as I am needs to be looked at. So is it true that God loves me and accepts me as I am? I would say technically the answer is yes. But now let me add another statement to it. God loves you and accepts you as you are, but he doesn't want to leave you that way. So I don't have to do something to earn the love of God. I have the love of God. It is extended toward me even as a sinner. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, the Bible says. Jesus says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So he loves me, but he doesn't want to leave me the way that I am. The classic example is the story of the prodigal son. He sinned against his father. He came to his senses. He decided to return home. And the father saw him and ran toward him and threw his arms around him and kissed him and hugged him and said, Rejoice, this my son who is dead is alive again. He who was lost is found. And then he said, Get this kid a bath and some clean clothes. Because the boy had been hanging out with pigs. He didn't smell right. He needed to clean his life up. He needed to learn that cleanliness is next to godliness, right? So this is us. We come to Jesus with all of our sin, with all of the things that are wrong, and God says, I love you. I accept you as you are. Now repent of your sin and live a new life, and I'll give you the power to do that from my Holy Spirit.